What's up America? Neil here from Jogger Firearms Academy. Today I want to talk to you guys about clearing malfunctions. Now I just want to throw this out there. If you're brand new to shooting, you just went to the range a few times, you just took a class, this is probably going to be a little more advanced than you need to be at this point. Or at your level, if you just started shooting a gun for the first time, let's work on the fundamentals. I've got a whole list of videos in there about fundamentals and grips and sight alignments and triggers and all that good stuff. But if you're ready now to kind of look and delve into a little bit of self-defense and understanding how to clear an actual malfunction of your firearm, then let's get started. All right, before we begin, all the weapons I'll be using today have been safety checked and there's no live ammo in here. What we're going to be using are these guys right here, which I've talked about many times. Those are called snap caps, okay? They make no sound, nothing happens, uh, but they do simulate a round so that our firearms will work as if there were live rounds in there. Okay, so let's first talk about our, our default, our, our most basic go-to movement for any type of uh, initial malfunction. That's what we call the tap rack bang drill, okay? It looks something like this. So here I have my weapon. I go out to take my shot and click instead of bang, okay? So the tap rack drill is where I'm tapping the base of the magazine, racking the slide, and coming back out to take my shot. Now, why do we do this? So first we need to understand that Many times a malfunction may, be, may happen because the magazine itself is not fully seated. Now the spring field in these steel magazines, typically if they're not fully in, they, they normally will just almost fall out with real rounds. But uh, we can kind of simulate this here a little bit. So as you can see here, the gun, the magazine is not fully seated. So as the slide were to go back and forth, it's not actually picking up any rounds. Okay? So you could wreck your slide, not have it seated, and now you actually don't have a round in the chamber at all. So the first thing is tap. Now, I want you guys to understand this. In addition to the tap rack, I want you to note where my firearm is, where my weapon is, so that if I'm actually out here and I, can, and I do have a malfunction, the first thing I'm going to do is bring this into an area where I can see my field of view. So right here, I can clearly see my weapon, what's going on with it, and I can see my environment around us. Because once again, this is going to be in a self-defense area, the range. We have all the time in the world. We can look at this gun any way we need to. But in reality, in a self-defense scenario, the first thing I'm going to do is get out of that fire, that, that threat area, trying to get down into something, and get my weapon in front of me so I can see it, so I can still survey the area. Now, once again, magazine. That gets seated first. As I seat this magazine, I want to use as many, I want to use as little steps rather as I possibly can. So after the seats, all I'm going to do is rotate my hand around, grab the rack of the slide, or grab the slide, and rack it back with force, like you mean it. Okay. After this gets racked back, I'm going to come right back in and get my shooting grip to take the next live round shot. Okay. So the tap rack drill is going to work in scenarios where the uh, you have a, a light primer strike and the round doesn't go off, or the primer itself is bad, or the magazine isn't seated. But there's a couple other malfunctions that may, you may encounter where the tap rack drill alone may not be enough. So first one we're going to talk about is a stovepipe. A stovepipe a lot of times is going to be in a scenario where the shooter is what we call limp bristling, where they have a lot of movement here. And what can happen is the spent casing that's going to come out of the gun actually gets caught by the slide again on its, on its return back, loading the next round. So there's a couple of uh, things to do. For first and, first and foremost, you're going to be able to see this one pretty clearly. So, typically, rather than having to come in here and do a tap rack drill, we can immediately see that there's a stovepipe here. So, the method I like the best in this one, and the simplest really, is to simply swipe the round away, like a knife in. Swipe it away. Some uh, times people actually use their thumb and bring it back. I find that, uh, although that is very f a very quick way to do it, in a high stress scenario, we're talking about basic gross motor skills. So just this quick big movement tends to work the best. This way then, the round that was trying to go into the chamber will be shoved home when the slide returns and you'll be able to go ahead and take your next shot. So simply put, swipe and fire. Okay, swipe and fire. And that will take care of a stovepipe. Okay, there you see what we call a double feed. There's the round in the chamber that you see already occupying the chamber, and then you have the second one in the magazine trying to be shoved into that same chamber, and we, it creates what we call a double feed. Okay, so clearing the double feed is the most difficult of all the malfunctions. So the first thing I, 
ideally that I like to do is remove the magazine, the ammunition source first. Now this can be very difficult because it's, there's a lot of tension between the slide trying to shove that round into the chamber and the magazine itself. So what I like to do, press the magazine release and as you see here, that magazine is not going to fall free. We're going to press the magazine release, go ahead and grasp the base of the magazine, rip it out of the gun. Then I'm going to take it with the ejection slide pointing downward and wrap the firearm. Take my magazine, reinsert, and get back into the fight. Now, I'm going to show you the alternative version to this if you don't have the strength to rip that magazine out. Okay, so if you don't have the ability to actually physically pull it out, then what you want to do here is rack the slide to the back and lock it. Now you'll be able to easily remove that magazine, run your slide, insert, load up your gun and go back to work. So again, there's a, a real value to having these snap caps. It allows you to train a multitude of different things, including malfunctions. But one thing that you can practice in dry, dry fire practice is just this tap rack drill over and over and over again to make sure that you're doing it the same way each time. You bring it up into your field of view, seek the magazine, rack the slide, and get back on target. Okay? Uh, but you can practice all these malfunctions at home. Again, in dry fire practice, as long as you have those snap caps, they work really, really well. All right, guys, hope you guys found that uh, helpful as far as clearing malfunctions. Trust me, it's extremely important that you guys actually practice these techniques and use these things in a stress-free environment at your home rather than when your life is on the line. You want to make sure that you understand how to manipulate this gun, get it back up and running when it goes down. And I don't care what brand of gun you have, if you train with it hard enough, these malfunctions will happen. There are no exceptions. So make sure that you train them and that you become effective with them. Okay? If you like what you see, go ahead and give me a thumbs up at the bottom of the video and subscribe. You'll get notified when I get new videos out. And as always, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.